Welcome to tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover some of the default ways of creating dialog windows, as well as how using some of the new functionality available in Twine 2.1 to create modals. So let's look at this for a second. There are many different ways to create new windows using browser functionality in Twine. The first is the alert macro, and it's something a lot of web users have seen before. You get a simple message. Hi, I'm an alert. And we can click OK, and it closes. A more traditional approach might be the confirmation window, called in Twine using the confirm macro. And it asks for a confirmation, either OK or cancel. So we can click OK or cancel, and this window will close. So a third, and sometimes very useful way, and we're getting player input, is using the prompt macro that causes that calls the prompt dialog window. So we can see that. Now see in this case we have a default value and we can type some new string in, in this case S S S S S. However, what you may have noticed in watching these is that Chrome added this additional choice here. I can prevent extra additional dialogs from showing up if I would like to. What this means in practice is for Twine stories that rely on alert, confirm, or prompt, they can be blocked completely from showing up to the player, if the player so chooses. So abusing these, and the sort of threshold for abuse is usually about two of them in a short time period, means that the user can close them completely. So while they could be useful using alert or confirm or prompt, you have to keep in mind they could also be very annoying for some users, in which case functionality of the Twine story may be prevented or even stopped or not work at all. For example, if I click this, and I won't at this moment, but if I did, I could prevent this page from creating additional dialogues, in which case I would not be able to enter future input for additional prompts because they just would not show up at all, which can kind of be a problem for some stories. So if we can't always use alert and confirm or prompt, what could we do? Well, we could use modals. So in user interface design, a modal window is a graphical control element subordinate to an application's main window. And we already saw this with alert and confirm and prompt. They were subordinate to each of them. They showed up within it. But a modal creates a new mode, hence the name, that disables the main window, but keeps it visible with the new modal window as a child window in front of it. Now, if you've ever used a, a number of different websites that use this approach, you've clicked on an image, the image has popped up, and everything else is put a sort of grayed out or grayed towards the background. It's an example of a modal window, where something is centered, the new child window, and everything else is sort of now subordinate to it for a moment, before you close it and they switch back. So we can create, recreate that functionality within Twine using some new macros that are part of Twine 2.1 that's part of Harlow 2.0. So let's look at that. I can click on open a modal, ah, and it does. And here's our new modal window. As well as, like with the definition, I can't access now, as long as the modal is open, the parent window information so the links don't work and nothing else does until I close the modal. In which case I can access stuff again and highlight the stuff to my content. We can open it, close it, open it, close it, open it, close it, <laughs> and do that all day long if we'd really like to. And some days we really would open and close and open and close. <laughs> well let's go look at the code for a second. So as I talked about in this first patch with passage, there are a number of different default ways of opening dialogs. There was the alert macro that I talked about that shows an alert, a single message, hi, I'm an alert, using the alert macro, as well as the confirmation dialog window, which I showed and gives you two choices, OK or cancel. And you can see, of course, in this compound example, we can save whatever the user clicked, either OK or cancel in the result. So we can set the variable result to the value of whatever happened for the user to click confirm, either OK or cancel. As well as we can do the same thing with the prompt using the prompt macro and prompt dialog window. 
whatever the user entered within the prompt and we asked him for something, we can save that in the variable result, save the value to the variable result. And then of course it had a default value and that's what this third is. So prompt macro as well as two things, whatever to ask, whatever to sort of prompt the user and then some, some sort of default value or some value to put there that the user will then get if they don't enter anything. And of course we can save that, we can set this variable to the value of that. And so we have an alert that shows a single message. We have a confirmation dialog that asks either OK or cancel, sort of yes, no, binary, as well as a prompt, which is asks for some type of string response, which could be a number or could also be some type of text. Now our modal, however, uses some new functionality, as I mentioned, that's part of Twine 2.1. In this case, it is the show macro, which is very new, which shows some hook that has been hidden previously. So that may sound curious if you're very knowledgeable about how Twine 2.0 works. All hooks, you may know, are in fact visible by default, unless something else is acting upon them in some way to hide them. So it may seem odd to need a show macro if all hooks are automatically shown. However, in a Harlow 2.0 part of Twine 2.1, we have a new way to automatically hide hooks using a different way of constructing a name tag for that hook. So in this case, we have modal as the name tag toward this hook, this whole thing here, from the open bracket to the close bracket. And we can tell it's a name tag because it ends in a bar. However, it's not using an arrow or a less than or greater than depending on if it's in the front or the back. In this case, we're using a parentheses. In this case, an open parentheses. And so this whole thing, Twine has told, is to go ahead and hide it. This is a hook, this is its name tag, but don't show anything initially. And so we can use down here, the show macro, to act on that to then show that hook. We can combine that functionality with link repeat in two different instances here to allow us to show something, then hide something, and then show it and hide it as I was going back and forth. <coughs> so in this case, for open modal, we're using link repeat, which means the link doesn't disappear when we click it. So we have open modal. It uses a show macro acting on the name tag modal. The name tag modal is for this, when it starts, initially hidden hook. So it then shows it. Then we repeat similar functionality here. we we'll use link repeat again, acting on times. So that was what that X was. And then using the replace macro to replace the contents of the hook with the name tag modal. Again, all of this replace it with nothing. So there's nothing within these brackets here to act on for the replace. And so combining link repeat in both these cases with show and replace allows us to open it, close it, open it, close it, open it, close it, open it, close it, back and forth. Now, you may be questioning why hidden isn't being used. Because two of the new macros as part of Harlow 2.0 are show and hidden. The problem, at least currently with hidden, is that it's hard to hide something that the macro is inside of. That is, it's hard to sort of hide its parent parts. That's sort of a complicated issue at the moment. A quick way to do it, at least as of this recording, is to just use replace. And so we can take everything back out. So we can show it and then get rid of it. And then show it and then get rid of it. Now the reason why this is working in combination here is that link repeat saves this. So you can repeat the action. And so we have replace erasing it, but repeat saving it. And the combination of the two with the new macro show allows us to do the modal. So we can show it and then it gets erased, but it's still saved and we can reshow it and reshow it and reshow it to whatever we want. Now it's also a combination of a couple of different styles. You may see here class equals modal, class equals modal content, 
class equals close that act in conjunction with some CSS to allow us to style the modal in different ways. So instead of text just sort of appearing, we can sort of put it within a box. So let's go look at that as a final thing here. So the access a stories style sheet, we click on the name, edit stories, style sheet. And there's a lot of different things going on here. Nothing overly complex, but a lot of different styles that position and color things in different ways. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but they'll be part of the proofing copy that will be associated with this video. So you can go and look at this and copy from it if you'd like. But the modal is all of this. The modal content is all of this. And our little close X was all of this. So it floats to the right of all the content, as well as if it's hover or focus, change it to black, text coloration none, so no underlining, and the cursor should go back to pointer. And in fact, we're already seeing that as part of this editor mode. For example, if I put my normal cursor over this X, we see it shifts to the pointer. And so this is functionality that you've already used to using within the editor itself. And we click on this and it closes it. And we saw that same functionality within our modal. So we opened it, the cursor changes to a pointer, we click on it and it closes. And so these are four different ways to approach dialogues and modals. We can use the alert to sing a, send a single message. We can use the confirm, the confirmation, to get OK or cancel, sort of a yes or no. And we can use the prompt to get a longer string. However, we also need to keep in mind that if a user chooses to prevent additional dialogues, then that means alerts, confirm, and prompts would no longer work correctly. For example, I've now clicked this, and you now see I don't see a confirm window, and I don't see a prompt dialog. However, we will always see modals, because those work with Twine functionality and don't depend on the existing browser functionality. And notice, even if I undo and repeat, I've permanently stopped those. So something to keep in mind is these different tools within Twine 2.0 and now Twine 2.1 as part of Harlow 2.0 allow, afford, and constrain in different ways. We can use the three existing things that were part of the browser and part of everything else, the alert, confirm, and prompt, as well as this new way of using a modal to pop something up to get a some input perhaps or something else from a user as well as perhaps just show them information and then close it again in the same way using the new show macro combined with the link repeat and the replace macros. So in these different ways we can show information to a user or we can alert them to something as well as we can get input from them from them in the same way. Thanks for watching.